Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and I'm back with a new series called Plant of the Month. In this series, I will showcase a plant that is unique to that particular month or season and talk about it. And the first plant being showcased in this series would be the Clerodendrum wallichii. It is also commonly called the Nodding Clerodendrum, Bridal Whale and so on. This is native to the Sino-Indian range and is a perennial. They belong to the Verbenaceae family in the genus Clerodendrum. They are edible. Now this plant is majorly grown for its beautiful pendulous flowers that look like a light bulb when it is not unfurled and once they unfurl, they look like a shower of stars falling on earth. The blooms erupt from the reddish sepals that in itself is a sight to behold. This is a winter blooming plant and can grow into a large shrub of up to 7 feet tall. So growing them in the ground is good too. This is different from the bleeding heart clerodendrum in that the flowers of the bleeding heart are red and sepals are white and it's the exact opposite in this plant. The blooms do last for a long time in the bulb form before they unfurl. So I'm quite impressed with the longevity of the blooms as well. As you can see here, the stamen and style protrude out to make it more easier for the pollinators. The blooms are non-fragrant. So let's talk about my experience growing this plant so far. This plant has been in the garden for more than one year now and I thought I might lose this because it was neither flowering nor was it giving out leaves. There were days I felt I lost this plant but I persevered by watering this adequately and after a long wait I finally get to see this plant bloom. So since this plant is relatively new in the garden, I will most probably not have all the information needed and if there is anything new, I will update it when I make a propagation video. So now let us move on to the care tips. Sunlight. So in my garden, this receives partial sunlight. This is a highland plant and I don't know how well this would do in coastal zones, but I've read that it can be grown at sea level too. In my city, you can still get this to bloom because of our relatively colder winters. So if you grow this in a balcony with a southwest exposure, that would do. Watering. So now, this is a very important factor that can mean life or death for this one in particular. Please do not overwater this plant and give it some periods of dryness between watering. They are susceptible to rot. Also, do not water the plant parts and just drench the soil. Reduce watering drastically during winters and during summers. Ensure it does not go thirsty. Fertilizer so fertilize this plant with plain old compost twice a month or just add kitchen waste, use tea leaves, used filter coffee grounds and not brew packet powder into the soil. Do this only during the summer months and not fertilizing can also work if you take care of tip number 1 and 2. Pests and diseases. I so far have not seen pests on this plant, but like all plants, this could be susceptible to pests if your care regimen goes awry. Now, this is something peculiar I've seen on this plant that most of the flowers have a black spot exactly at the same point. And I'm assuming it is some kind of a fungal spot and it could be because of the incessant rains we have received these past few months. I don't see a big problem with this and it's more aesthetic than serious. Invasiveness. This is regarded as a low-risk plant when compared to some of the clerodendron plants in terms of invasiveness. Propagation. This can be propagated primarily by seeds and also stem cuttings. Potting mix. So I use a well-draining mix of 40% sand, 30% compost and 30% cocoa peat or garden soil. Container size. Since this is a big plant, gradually change the container size maybe once in two years after it finishes blooming. So keep changing it in a container one size bigger than the earlier one and for the container type, please note that I've used a clay pot. Cold tolerance. Since this is a highland plant that can grow in hilly regions that experience cold winters, I'm assuming that this is fairly cold tolerant. 
So people bring this plant home if you're lucky enough to find one. I got this in Lalbagh and you may want to visit the nursery during the winter months for such plants. I can't tell you how beautifully radiant these flowers are during the night. They actually look like diamonds in the sky. With this, we've come to the end of this episode of Plant of the Month and I hope you've enjoyed this particular program. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are given below. And always remember, to grow slow is to grow well. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, a very warm goodbye. Thank you.